Hey, what's going on guys? It's Paul from Boosted Films coming at you with another video. Just wanted to set this up a little bit and let you know what you're kind of about to watch. So I brought my Evo transmission to ASM or Andy Schmettergaard Motorsports. And if you're not already familiar, Andy Schmettergaard knows a lot about the Evo world. He's uh, done a lot of work on the Evos and he's an excellent, awesome driver as well. Now, luckily Andy was nice enough to let me film this teardown process. I didn't really plan uh, a whole lot out for this. I just kind of asked him if I could film it while I was doing it. So I've actually never ripped into a transmission before. So this was a total learning process for me and I was hoping you know to help you guys learn a little bit along the way as well help you see inside of an Evo transmission if you've never seen inside it before so just keep in mind that I kind of threw this camcorder up and just started recording this teardown process and Andy was obviously nice enough to let me film and explain things uh, to me along the way so this wasn't me trying to make an exact how-to of anything just trying to get a bit more information as I went along uh, learning more and more about this process. So that's all I got for this introductory spiel. So hopefully you enjoy the video and find something informative. Otherwise, if you have some tips for me, uh, you can always leave them in the comment section down below. As always, thanks for watching. So we're opening, we're separating the front half of the case and the back half, or how would you say that? Yep, so this is the bill housing side, and this is the actual trans case. We just gotta separate those two and pull the gear shafts down. Take off the shifter. Yep. I'm just gonna take that off. There's, there's a couple. I'm gonna take this off first. And it's very important not to lose this little thing. What's very important? This. Dropping those bolts. Yeah, I've seen this little thing. Hold it up. Actually, over there. Yours is your, your bushings in here are kind of. Should we get new ones? We could. It's they don't. It doesn't. It doesn't move as freely and as nice as it could. So I, I think they do make, you can buy just a couple of these little bushings inside here. Yeah, I don't think um, I touched those parts of the bushings. But yeah, this will sit here. And this is what controls the motion on your shifter when yeah. you're going left and right. Okay. This is, that's what this controls. And then the other way, so as we go through gears, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse, or maybe I had that backwards, I can't remember. Not really. We're it goes in. So this is the yeah. That's a little bearing that just holds that, that shaft, kind of supports it. Yeah. And then this is this is your shifter. So this will sit inside the shift forks, so it allows you to only engage one. So as you're pushing this in and out, and so I'll you show you. Once so when you take that out, when you put it back in, you don't have to worry about any special way of taking it out or special way. Of no, it just back in. you won't get it back in unless you kind of make sure that's lined up and then slide it. You can kind of see the shift forks right here. So this is okay. what it's pushing on. And that would be down. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you do it this way. Yeah. How many bolts are inside? Just the two? Just those two. Detents. Okay. Keep doing that. The detents are um, kind of what holds it in here. They're these little... Evos are nice. A lot of trends have... It's a separate bolt followed by a spring, followed by a ball, and it all comes kind of oh, apart. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Evos are just one bolt and the ball is all kind of held in there. So I can push in, you can actually push in on this ball, there's a spring inside here, and that's pushing against the, shi against the shift forks, and there's these little notches on the shift fork. So when you're in gear, this is actually holding it kind of in gear. Okay. If you take these out, you can actually go in gear really easy, um, but it can also pop out of gear really easy. So. And there's two of those? Three. Why three? It seems like an odd. Three shafts. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So you'll see when, the, when we get the gear sets out, yeah. a lot of this will probably make more sense. And those are it's, all the same? Are those all yep, interchangeable? All the same. Doesn't matter. The only other weird bolt, there's the bolt that holds the reverse gear. And that's a weird torx. I can't remember what size exactly. It's what do you mean by T50. holds the reverse gear? You'll see when I pull it apart. There's a gear we have to pull out. You actually have to pull it out of this, of this inspection cover. You have to pull that out before the shafts will slide up. Okay. Let's 
protection cover. Some people will also put a big magnet here, try to catch a lot of the shoot. Okay. So it's fell out. So when I took that bolt. Oh, okay, so that, okay. So, yeah, this will normally sit. I got it. yeah, I know. I know. It just sits up in there, yeah, okay. but reverse side over here. Dowels. Oh, that might up. Okay, just set this over here. Just pop the bell housing cover off. You've got your big center diff here. That's heavy. So if you were to change, like, um, see a lot of people talk about the final drive. This is the final drive ring, and then you also would change the output shaft. Just you know how some people do they're like the 411 final drive yeah. or whatever, which just changes the, all the gears, okay. changes the whole spacing of all the gears, long, everything longer or shorter or whatever. So you're changing this whole gear, okay. and then the output shaft. Okay. So which it's not is not very easy to change your final drive because you obviously you're taking apart your whole trans. Yeah. You've got to take apart the entire output shaft, put it on a different. Um, I'll put shaft okay. and then change this gear. So, so is there anything you should look for like with that? Like, is that? That looks fine. Yep. These are just... Mm -hmm. Most of the shit you did when you take it apart, you never see it where it I, I don't like... see too much. If, typically if you're... If you um, hear noise, hear whining and stuff, I would look... You know, you really want to look at all your bearings. Yeah. If there's any pitting on any of these. This looks pretty good. Um, but if you start seeing pitting, yep, here. yep, that's this. And then these, just, this is just another. Just yeah, so this is the this is the torque tube. This you can pound out. Um, I know the high drag cars and stuff will, will break that torque tube. But this is this is that thing that was sticking out of the trans. Yep. Before. The next thing we'll pull out is just both shafts. You have to kind of pull them out together. And you pull it out with the shift forks and everything, so. In there. Oh, that's the reverse light switch right there. Huh? Yep. So, pull it out. Just kind of wiggle it a little bit. There's your shafts. So that's pretty much the guts of the trans right there, huh? Pretty much. Yeah, that's all your gears. All the shifts. So can you tell works. me right away, like, fifth gear where fifth gear is shit? Fifth gear is... Um, it actually, it'd be the sinker itself probably that's bad right now, not the gear, most likely. Usually, if you catch a, if, if you keep driving it with it grinding, you'll eventually do damage to the gear. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, typically it's the sinker that wears out first. I usually do a new synchro and I'll do a new new slider. So this is the slider. We'll pull it all apart. And show mm -hmm. more. Okay. The, the the one sign you can do um, to test the synchro or to see how much wear. I'll just take this out. Here's your shift forks. What I like to do is put this all back in. If you've done enough of these, it doesn't matter. You 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 could probably put this together back together. Um, you know, with it all in a big box, you can figure it out. Yeah. When you're first taking it apart, I try to make sure everything kind of you almost put it back in the trans to how it came out. Yeah. So you just have a good reference point, if nothing yeah. else. The, the other real important thing. Depending how you take the trans out, too. You remember what I was talking about shims? Yeah. They'll kind of they'll usually kind of stay in here with oil and stuff. They kind of just stick, but they will fall out um, if you're not careful. And if you fall out and you lose track of them, or you don't put it back in right, you might have changed all the. So where's the preload? That that yeah. whole oh, this whole part here is the shim. I'll get it out. Here. What the hell happened to this trans? Is that normal? Is that rubbing down there like normal? I see that a lot. No, then I shouldn't. 
Yeah. Here's your shim. Hold on. So right, there's so there's one for each side. That's basically the case shim. Okay, yep. and it was down that, there. That'd be for the um, was it the input shaft. And then the other one is actually still sitting underneath this race. Uh, I won't even take it out, but if you just suffered like a a transplant, like a gear blew apart on you, and you got gear stuff, you know, just debris everywhere. You'd really want to take all this out. You take these out. There's actually um, a little chamber in here. So you're, you're, you have your big final drive ring gear. Yeah. It's actually acting kind of as a little pump, it's throwing oil up in into here, and then inside, and that actually comes out. See that hole out of here? Yeah. It'll actually push oil through here and actually pushes it through the shaft inside inside the shaft. It's actually a little yeah. seal there. So there's oil flowing inside that shaft and kind of getting pushed out in between. Um, in between, so there's actually fluid kind of coming out and that's helped lubricating everything. There's yeah. some bearings in here. You know, you clean your case. These, um, the only way to get this up, yeah. right, you, ha you have to drill those out and then you you tap and thread it for a little bolt or whatever. Oh, that makes, yeah, so you got to service it again when you needed to. Yep. Um, a lot of people, a little trick too, they'll bend this little tab here up a little bit to try to grab some more oil. Okay. Um, so you got first, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse. So, so, well, but they're all like together, right? So couldn't you call that first? Yeah. So there's always there's always two so sides. You, you, you have an input shaft and an output shaft side. Okay. So when you're in neutral, um, the sometimes they're called the synchro side of the gear. We'll we'll do it on this side. Uh, so first gear spinning. Yeah. When you go in gear. It's locking them together. Gotcha. So now that spins with the shaft. Yeah. And the rest of the gears can spin freely. So, second. But we just lost third, fourth slider. But so then basically, it's, that's why you say the gears, because some of them are. Some are locked to the shaft. The sh yeah. So okay. one side has are to free spin, the other side is locked to the shaft. Yeah. So that's how you have power coming in off this side, and power's going. So power comes in off the engine, power goes out on the final drive. Yeah. So one side is always locked. So first gear, um, the other side is actually built I as part of the shaft. Built in the shaft yeah. Same with second. Um, third gear is, 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 the is gear not here. right, and it's actually not part of the shaft. It slides on, but it's locked to the shaft. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes the, tr the trans that the other side of the gear is part of the whole shaft. Sometimes so are, they make it serviceable. These, none of these gears are actually on the shaft. Yeah, the whole output shaft. The only the only gear on it is the final drive. Okay. So everything else can be removed. But. Um, and then, yeah, this is fourth, fourth gear, um, which is also can be removed off the shaft. So when you do your straight cut fourth gear, it would have this gear and this gear. Yeah. It has both sides. It makes sense. They have to be made up, obviously. Yeah. Okay. But well, it is interesting. Sure. I'm about. looking at the wrong. This is fourth gear. This, this is the fourth gear. Okay. Um, the synchro side, this is the other side. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. And then as you're in neutral, it's just, this gear is just free spinning. So your gears are always spinning. Yeah. Um, you know, even when you're not moving, if you if the car's running but you're in neutral, this is still spinning. Because you're getting. And then it's which is also transferring. You know, so this gear's always spinning, and this gear's always spinning. Um, these sides won't spin because this one's spinning over here. So yeah, you're you're the gears are just free spinning in there. Your trans, every you still have moving parts inside your trans. Even when your car's just sitting in neutral. In, unless you're holding the clutch in. When the clutch is out, this this is connected to your. Clutch. Yeah. So when it's out, this is spinning with the engine. So the, your this shaft is always spinning. Interesting. You ever notice in the really cold weather, you start your car and you let the clutch out and you kind of feel it creep forward? Yeah, my Subaru just did that. Yep. That's because this is spinning and the fluid is so thick that it wants to spin this other side of the gears, just because the fluid's you know it's creating drag and stuff and it's wanting to spin the the other side of the shaft. Nice. So the way a synchro works is you have this cone. This is slightly coned along with the synchro. So if you don't put any pressure, you can spin this. Yeah. Right? As soon as you add pressure, it adds friction. And it's hard to spin these two separate from each other. So the purpose of the synchro is to slow this gear down or speed it up or whatever. To It's got to synchronize to the rest of the, the shaft. Otherwise, you'll just grind the gears. Because you have two, when you're going from third to fourth, 
the shaft has to change speeds. Yeah. So the synchro, when you when you push on your shifter, it moves these forks, which yeah. moves these sliders, which will actually push down on this synchro. As it's going into gear, it's pushing down to help mesh that that gear speed to the shaft. So it, when, as it's pushing, it's it's putting friction to try to slow this gear down or speed it up. And then you'll engage the gear. This this slider actually will drop down and lock in all, all these teeth to the slider, which then locks this gear to the rest of that shaft. So you've just engaged that gear. So when the synchro wears, you can push this down, and it it wore you know too much material off here or, or the synchro, and it'll actually bottom out. So this little gap down here between the gear and the synchro, this one's this you can actually see a little bit of gap. Yeah, can you bring it down a little bit? Right down there. That little bit of gap in between, if it bottoms out, that synchro is not able to supply enough friction anymore. Not as free to spin as it should, it, It's too easy. You can push pressure on, and you can still spin it. Like, I actually, you can kind of see here, I've actually been putting quite a bit of pressure on your fifth gear. I'm still able to spin that. I shouldn't be able to spin that by hand. Now, can you do a different one? That would... So, um, yeah. yeah, let's see. This is second. I can't spin it, though. But if I let go, I can spin it. And you can, okay. you can if, if you feel it, you'll see what I mean. I mean, you, you just need a little bit of pressure there, and it's... Yeah. Second is a double sync road, so... Well, you, it's interesting. Oh, yeah. It's, well... It's, it, it becomes a little harder, yeah. but it's still... You shouldn't be able to turn it at all. Yeah. Yeah, this one locks. Yeah, yeah it just feels... Okay. Yeah, and you're not even engaged in no. the gear yet, and it's already locked. But it didn't quite bottom out, you know. So sometimes you'll see the sinker like completely bottom out and hit the gear. The, the, the reason I think fifth gear fails, for one, it's it's a smaller gear, smaller synchro, so you have less surface area. You know, the bigger gear you get, the bigger the synchro is, the more surface area is there. Um, the next thing is fifth gear is like a huge drop. Fifth gear is a mega overdrive for cruising down the highway yeah. and stuff. It's not meant to be, you know, have full power and shift fast. So yeah, if okay. you do. If you look at any race transmission, any sequential transmission, I mean, the gear ratio between fourth and fifth is all really close. Okay. They're all close close ratio. But if the car's a daily driver, you don't want to be cruising down the highway in top gear and still be at 4,000 RPM. Yeah. So you want it to drop down in a nice, comfortable RPM range. Right, if you start looking at the like the top mile an hour, um, you know, fourth, you'd only hit one, depending on how you want to rev it, you know, 115 mile an hour, and then you go to fifth, and then fifth can top out at like 160 something. Like there's this huge gap. So you can gap change fifth there. so it'll top out at like a buck right. five or whatever. So then you you higher RPM. If, if you road course your Evo with the stock Evo eight or nine trans, if you go to fifth, you'll know what I mean. You just stop accelerating. The car you just you're, you're going to fourth. It's got nice power. You go to fifth and it's just it just falls off. Mm -hmm. if you go to the JDM fifth. It makes it more useful. Um, and what are you guys like? What's in the we, what's in Ronnie's car? We were actually running. Evo. Um, what we want to do is we run a, we want to run a 411 with the JDM fifth, okay. and that will bring the JDM fifth. We, we still want a decent cruising RPM. We don't want to be cruising at 4,000 RPM. So the 411 actually lengthens all the gears, okay. and the JDM fifth will bring it back down. So okay. it probably brings fifth back to what it normally would be, but all the other gears are so you fairly close. So as much power on the track, or like it, it'll make it a stuff. really universal setup. Okay. So like recommendations for mine, really, you think just I mean, fifth I for sure, and then. Um, so this is the slider. This is what you know. You move, yeah. um, engages the gear. These little edges will start to wear off. Mm -hmm. um, they're supposed to be a kind of like a little triangle, and it will catch the the next gear, and they'll and sometimes get rounded off, so it, it, it doesn't. You, know, you might get second. a little grind or something. This one is third and fourth. Okay. Fell off there, but um, I usually these are cheap. I think they're like 35, 40 bucks, whatever. I do. I usually do all new sliders. Okay. Um, you know, for sure, fifth gear synchro. I've been doing a lot of the, the synchro tech makes those carbon synchros. It seems to help a little bit lengthen the. And then, is the it worth like level. doing two, three? Or I mean, it feels synchros. First gear, first gear feels good. Second gear felt good. Um, yeah, third is usually pretty good. 
How did it feel driving? Did you have any complaints? I'm trying to remember. I don't think I had any issues other than fifth. I mean, so these only go on one way. There's. I might really, have missed third once. I don't know about. If you look really closely, there's there's two teeth here, here, and here that are bigger than the rest. Oh yeah. Oh wait. Well. Five. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, and that, those actually line up on the, on the hub. There's two teeth that are deeper, right there. Those two are deeper than the rest. Okay. So there's, there's three spots. So it only it only goes on one way. Hmm. So if you, that's why you kind of gotta get lined up just right. Okay. So there they are. Take a few shots. I think that's why, you know, this is where I'd be intimidated. I, I could have ripped this apart myself, but putting it back together, <laughs> I'd be yeah, like, Yeah, there's, there's a few little tricks, but once you know it, and, yeah. and it's, it's pretty common on a lot of trends, there's usually only one way to put um, the sliders on. Some have a, so there's this little spring around the synchros. Uh, some transmissions have a little different, um, the Evo 10s have a little, like, ball and, uh, I wish I knew the correct name for it, but little things to help lock the, the synchro. Mm. I don't know, there's, every train is a little different, but you start taking one or two apart, and then they're all kind of generally the same. Yeah. You know, once you understand the concept, you just... I learned just by, you know, I kind of researched the concepts, and then I just took one apart, and I would just sit here and play with it for a little that's while, what, you know. That's what you got to do, but yeah, I, you, I feel better doing it when someone else shows me and explains to me, so I'm actually <laughs> like, what does it do? Like, well, it it definitely know. saves time. I mean, yeah, because like, to know that you just put a little pressure on it and that you shouldn't Yep, shouldn't, shouldn't be able to yeah. spin it.